Here we go. I've restarted the recording. This is our Design 350 Lab. It's Wednesday, November 3rd at 11 o'clock. We are on <clears throat> Google Meet. And um, what I want to do today is, is go over your alternate final exam. So there we go. And... Um, the goal from this, excuse me just for a moment, the goal is that um, um, if you want to start working on it now and, 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 and just practice and it gives you time to get it done and, and stuff, um, I just think it's, it's useful for you. And this part of the exam is the survey portion of the exam. So you're going to create a survey record. It's for Winding Way. Uh, you can also, if you want, include this in your project number two. It will look very cool. And uh, and so you'll just get some stuff in there. And um, I've got something here for you. So I need to set this up so that you have the um, put that the other way and I'm going to share that anyone with the link can view and it looks to me like I didn't post the link so I'd better do that so here's I'm gonna put it right up here So there's the link to your alternate final exam. And I'll also put the link right there. So you've got it in a few places. And I just want to describe it for you today so that you know what's going on. Okay. So if you go to that final exam, alternate final exam, you'll go to here. You will not see this, but I'm going to show it to you in some form. Let's see what the, what the thing says to do. And again, this is kind of like half of your final exam. It's the survey portion of it. I'm going to go look at it over here on this one. Make it a little smaller so that you can see it. So you're supposed to draft a property line site plan according to some theodolite readings. And I've given you an image set that has all of those readings. And then there's some things to note. The T1 reading is really to the property datum. That's the northwest corner of the property. And it gives us our project elevation of zero. So regardless of what its actual elevation is in the world with respect to sea level or this or that, it becomes our zero elevation. And then there's three points that <clears throat> as you plot them out, they'll create an arc. So T1, <clears throat> excuse me. T1, T1.1, and T1.2, excuse me just a moment, I need to catch this, uh, no I don't, when you plot those three points, you'll actually do a three point arc through those points to create that part of the property, and then T2 had to be set up, needed to move it so we could capture the readings at the southwest corner of the lot. Because where we set up T1, we could not see T, the, the southwest corner because there was something in the way. So what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to create a survey report, which is the spreadsheet and the AutoCAD file, create a property line drawing, and a topo drawing. So however you go about doing those. 
You can use AutoCAD, you can use Revit, you can use whatever system you want. So that's what you're supposed to do. So to do that, you've got this README file. Your job is to first create a survey record. And you'll see what it looks like. And uh, you can fill it out. I, don't, I have it here so that you can't make a copy of it. But there are two back site readings, right, that, that allow you to, it's really one back site reading that is done twice, just to double check. And then you have T1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4. And you get an instrument height. You get a distance. You have an angle reading which is all zero in this case. It's, they're all level. You have rod readings, ground elevation, and azimuth readings. So these are all, let me just make those ones um, normal, right? So you're going to see all of those, <clears throat> and you'll just fill it out, and you'll make a note like that and you'll put your data into the survey reading here is the data that you've got and and sometimes they're sideways and stuff does I think I can maybe I can do a rotate but you've got the theodolite azimuth readings and rod readings and you'll probably have to rotate most of these to read them but you've got the stadia readings and your level reading. And so you have these on all of them. You have your azimuth reading and your rod reading for each of the points. Azimuth reading, rod reading, azimuth reading, rod reading. I got... I got them to plot better as we went. Okay, and so, and you can get, of course, the distances from the stadia, and you can get your rod reading of the elevation. And for each one, you can get the azimuth, you know, 78 degrees, 14 minutes, and just barely over zero seconds and all of them this is a level lot pretty level lot not perfectly level but was able to get all of the readings at one level and this one is labeled t2 this is the back site to t1.4 as an example okay and then we have our t2.4 azimuth reading should really be t2.1 but that's okay okay so those are all there for you now what you might um, end up presenting is a CAD oh I've got my CAD open might be this one I don't know which one it is I'll, I'll just go try to find it so you're gonna end up with a CAD drawing like that maybe a little bit better I don't have layers in here that shows where everything is. You might even take a snip of that and put it on your survey drawing. And then you'll generate those drawings that I asked for. The spreadsheet and that AutoCAD file that you just saw. And then a good industry standard property line drawing and a good industry standard topo drawing. Okay, and for your land planning portion 
of the final exam. Um, I'll probably just, um, I'm not positive what I'll do for that one yet. But you'll have been working that hard in the last couple of weeks, so it shouldn't be too bad. So that's, the, that's what we're looking for. Create a survey from all of these cool readings that I've made for you. And just so you know, this is essentially the location that we're going to be working with um, starting next week. So it's your Project 2 site, but it doesn't quite come out right. Okay? I, I, it's not exactly the site. It's almost the site. It's close to the site. And if you draw it up and use it in the site, uh, then that's good. But you'll need to have the survey record and all of this good, good work to show where it's from. Okay, any questions about that? Are you comfortable reading these? These? Um, these let me just take one of these and just make sure that we know what it's like. So let me download that and then open it. So as an example, you can see here, here's the azimuth reading to the back site. Okay, it's the, it's the, it's the back site. I don't know why this says that. Um, but you can see I'm at 242, 40, two minutes and it's less than 10 but more than five so maybe seven eight nine seconds something like that and I've got a level theatolite my line of sight is level so there are no adjustments to be made So that was my T1 back sight. And this is my rod reading then. And so my rod reading is pretty close to 7. Okay, if I look at that and that, it's pretty close to right on seven feet. And then my stadia is point one, point two, point three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, five. Point nine two five times two. That's 1.85, so it's 185 feet. So I've got my elevation, I've got my distance, and my reading. I could probably highlight this out and see what it said. I was pretty close. 185.37, my rod reading was 7. And I was 242, 42, and I said six, seven. And, uh, you know, originally I, I saw that as a six. So that's going to be pretty close. It's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty close to what you've got. Okay, and so there's your backside reading. And I just, because... I have the spreadsheet set up to do an average. I just did the same thing again, but you don't need that. You know that those are all just right on there. Okay. And then I just set up all my other points. 
T1.1234, T2 with my two back sights, and then I obviously mislabeled those ones. It should have been T2.1. Okay, so your job is to put that into a survey record and then draw it. And, you know, you'll have to do some alignment to get this last point, right? Because you're going to have two totally separate setups. So you're going to draw this plus that plus that. Then you're going to draw this plus this. And then you'll just close it because you know those have to connect. Okay, so that's how you're going to do it. Remember that this is operating clockwise, so you'll need that. My units are decimal feet and degrees, minutes, seconds, clockwise. It's best to do a bit, little bit better layer control than what I've got. And there we go. So, that is, in essence, what I've got for the lab for today. It's the survey lab. I wanted to go over having all of these done and ready for you. They are, they're all right in here. I can, I can change that reading right now. I'm going to change that because that's really what it should be. And that's one half of your final exam. If you want to do the long, slow process final exam, I find that this is a little bit better because you can take your time and think it through and see how it's working. If you try it and you don't like it, there will be a regular final exam option that will be just, you know, two hours long. It'll be timed. It'll be on, on Google Meet, and you'll share your screen, and I'll show you how to do that. And it'll just be, you know, bang out some stuff. But I think this is more useful. Okay, any questions right now? So yes, you, the question is, you can get the final exam done early, and the answer is yes. Won't that be nice? Makes life uh, at that final exam time. If you have other final exams, um, you'll, you'll be able to do that. Now, the other thing is, um, even if you want to do this alternate one, it would the it'll go into the quote final exam submittal folder in Canvas, which isn't open yet, and that will remain open until the last day of finals, which I think is December sixteenth. You know, so if something happens and you know you're working away, and then you know. All of a sudden, your computer goes down or this or that or the other thing. Don't sweat it. There will be plenty of time. But yes, my goal is to have it done early so that you can truly enjoy your holiday time. Cool. Anything else? Okay. A question about the letter of intent and the other letters. Go ahead. And I'll look those up. And I'm I'm trying to find weekly resources. So you can go ahead and type that in. 
or do you want to share your screen or do you just have a question that you can type up? Okay, so the question is, do we just write it as, as you're the person proposing it and who will be pay, pay, paying for the project? Yes, you would be the name of the person acting for the owner and you would take on the position of designer. Um, you could uh, say contractors are to be determined and... Um, Paying for it right now, you can have the property owner, and you can just say property owner uh, will own the project assets and will be paying for it. Now, normally on something like this, there would be a bank involved because most people don't have ten, fifteen, twenty, fifty thousand dollars to shell out, and there would be some sort of a a bank payment but it is possible to have now with the crowdsource funding there's you know lending tree and um, you know um, all sorts of lending institutions online that you can get personal loans for that are crowdfunded and you you know give it a five five year payback period or something like that and they just approve you and so for now, um, you can either say, uh, well, owner's name, and you can, just, you can just say owner, property owner, uh, will be paying for the, prop, for the project and will own the project assets. For contractor right now, uh, you can list for right now just to be determined, TBD. Normally, by the time this gets to the um, planning commission, that would be hired. But, you know, this is a class, <laughs> so so we don't have to go around doing that. Um, shoot, you could use Mr. Welch uh, as his name. Um, and so a couple of sentences or so, each of the other areas, yes. So on the background... Uh, you know, j you, you, what's nice is you can just summarize it and you don't need to justify it on the background. You don't need to justify it or show the, um, uh, I think your mic just started up. Um, it did. I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, that's cool. It just started up. So, so it, here you just need to make statements and you don't need to back them up or show evidence. Okay, so um, because I, I was, I went back in the video and I was re going through it, um, and you gave like just little kind of pinpoints of things. So we would just give a, basically the background would be telling what we need uh, or what the need is as far as the foster youth. The purpose would be because of the fostered youth and what they what. Um, right. So so what you would do is, this would obviously the need, along with the number of resources that foster youth need, one of the main ones is reliable shelter during their emancipation period, which can be from whatever age to whatever age. So that would be like a significant portion of the need. And you would say to meet the shelter portion of the foster youth need, this proposal will, sorry about that, will provide uh, a location and the assets for up to three tiny houses targeted to foster youth, um, uh, the foster youth population um, with the goal of being at a um, affordable 
rental level that meets normal foster youth income levels, right? Something like that. So that's the main objective is to is to provide three tiny up to three tiny houses with um, amenities and a lot. Um, so those would be the main objectives, and then the proposal. The, the description of the proposal is would be to um, improve the site with ingress and egress, stormwater pollution plan, uh, upgraded utilities and power, um, appropriate building pad, you know, those things that you're going to do. So the need, the purpose, how it gets done. Does that make sense? That does, yes. So so this gets, each one gets a little bit more focused to, to the thing. And then in the compliance, that's just like super basic, you know. Uh, regulatory requirements include uh, Fair Housing Authority, uh, Fair, Fair Housing Act, fire regulations, social services requirements, local building codes, and our intent is to ensure the intent of this proposal is to show our ability and our intent to comply with all um, applicable regulatory requirements. Okay, and then the, the letter of support is basically, um, a, you said like a copy and paste of the um, the letter of intent in some of the areas. Right. So, so, so here's the, this is literally a list, right, of supporting organizations. And then they'll each get each of those people on this, this one will, you'll basically copy and paste those from your letter of an intent and then ask the organization to fill in this part and so so this just again it just becomes a template for them where you make sure that this matches this whoops matches the uh there we go so whatever is here, you'll come over and put it. Sorry, I'm all over the place. You'll put it there. You'll put it there. And you'll put it there. And the principles. And, and so, yes, this is a copy of your letter of intent. And then whoever fills out the letter of support will type in their portion of this. And in general, you would ha you would hope to have three or four of these that you would package up and staple to this cover letter and hand that in. Um, a real simple example is I recently uh, asked the city to remove a ginormous pine tree that was right behind our house. It was encroaching on it. It's in public land and it had dropped a huge limb. Well, they wanted a letter of support from all the neighbors that said it was okay with them. And so we did the same type of thing. We wrote out all of this stuff about why we were asking for actually we didn't ask for the tree to be removed we asked them for to do a safety inspection and to assure us that our house was in no hazard and they came back and said no no there's a hazard we're removing that thing but but they asked us to have our our neighbors to give a letter of support for this so that they knew they wouldn't get complaints from the neighbors so do we do we act as the people um, writing the letter of support, or do we get like a sample letter of support? No, yeah, you meeting? just you would just do this period and say 
this is what I'm going to give to everybody. So you just need this one plus one where you've copied your stuff in here. And then you just know, you know, anybody who, anybody on this list that you put down, you would hand this to them and say, please, please fill out the last part. <laughs> okay. So then we would have to put, uh, we would list the organizations though that, um, um, that on, we think that we'd be able to help. Yeah. On this one here, you would go through those organizations and, and you gave a bunch of them. I think I'm going to get from Ryle and um, the rest of the social explorer crew today, another list uh, that I can post that will really give people these organizations. Cause I think that was one, you know, Educationally, here's the organizations. Social services, here's the organizations. Health, here's the organizations. So we should be able to post. Oh, dang it. I don't like the way they do that watermark. It really stinks. It doesn't <laughs> lock in. Oh, you can't pin it I, in the place or anything? Yeah, how do I pin that thing? Because it keeps moving around. Uh, watermarks aren't supposed to move around. <laughs> uh, insert. Watermark. There it is. Faded. It is not supposed to move. Oh, well. They'll get better at it. Uh, I'll write something in. Because, you know, I shouldn't be able to... Oh, no, that's that's my headers option. Okay. In any case, um, yeah, so we'll get a list of organizations probably this afternoon. Okay, so then um, so then we need to make sure that we have our uh, letter of intent filled out and yep. everything and, and then we'll have our letter of support that just has the principal's background, purpose, and description on there. Yep. And then we'll leave the statement leave of that support. Just like blank. that. Yep. Okay. And then um, as far as the submission cover for the letter of support, that is what we'll, so we'll just wait on that until you have the uh, list posted. Right. Okay. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Anything else? I think that was the only question that I had for today. Okay. And that sounds good. And, and we'll go over more tomorrow and more on Friday. This is a cool, cool, cool project that's coming together. Awesome. And then we just input that in the, um, uh, where they have the spots for it on, um, the project one. So, so what you'll submit, uh, let me go to the canvas page. What it says down here is you're going to submit, you'll, you'll put everything together as PDFs. So you'll have your 14 sheets plus these three sheets as PDFs and you'll put them all together. Okay. You'll submit your AutoCAD and or Revit file. And so there will basically just be two files to turn in here. So you'll have your, your set of, uh, so there should be 17 pages total of the PDF and then also your Revit or AutoCAD file? Yep. Okay. So let's see, this is asking me, verify I can log in. Yes, there we go. Um, so this one is actually, so this one isn't, um, but, 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 bum, but, bum, bum. so that's really not quite right. <laughs> go by, go by what's on the calendar. It's better. This okay. is, this is better because I changed the, it from the Hamul site, uh, for the alternate. So I better. I better fix that up. I'm not giving that. I'm going to call that plus the three required letters. 
that now now it's clear i hope <laughs> cool okay well i'm going to go ahead and stop the recording then